I've been growing food in raised beds for over 15 years. While providing greater access to gardening, they're the perfect option if you have poor soil or no soil. I've always wanted to try the Vigo raised beds because I like the design and the structure that they bring to gardens. But how would they fit in with my existing cedar raised beds? And would the quality hold up in my Texas vegetable garden? Well, I finally got my hands on a couple, and I'm sharing my tips for the initial assembly as well as my first impressions. I'm Scott from New Garden Road, always out here to inform, inspire, and elevate you. Encouraging biodiversity and restoring habitat is my mission, one garden at a time. This video is sponsored by Vigo Garden. For the initial assembly, I have some tips for you. I recommend that you organize all the little pieces that come in the kit before you start the actual assembly. If you don't have someone assisting you with the assembly, this can be really helpful. When I was growing up, I used to love playing with Legos and I would do the same thing. It makes it easier to get the parts that you need as you follow the instructions. Luckily, you get some really great clear instructions on the assembly of these raised beds and it's fairly easy to move through. You've got two types of nuts, some washers and some bolts. You can divide those up into four separate cups or you can simply organize them on a flat clean surface. These are some small parts and they have a way of disappearing pretty quickly if you're working in a grassy or a mulched area. The metal panels are shipped to you with plastic film on both sides. I put together quite a few of these raised beds and every now and then one of the sides doesn't have plastic on it. But you want to really keep a keen eye on this because the last thing you want to do is put things together, start filling it up and realize that you've still got some plastic on there. That's not what you want in your raised bed. I found this to be one of the most time consuming steps in the process, but it's essential that they come this way because it protects them during shipping and handling. Be mindful as you handle the panels once you've removed that plastic sheeting because it's very easy for the metal on metal contact to produce some scratches. And if you're working on a hard or rough surface, that could likely produce some scratches as well. So consider laying things out on a tarp or a big piece of cardboard. A Phillips head screwdriver is one of the only tools that you're gonna need. And you could just as well use a drill driver in the process. If you're putting it together by yourself, that could be helpful. It's not completely necessary though. Whether you're working with the 17 inch tall or a 32 inch tall model, you may find it difficult to reach the fasteners at the bottom of the panels. One thing you can do that might be helpful would be to flip the panels upside down to finish the bottom two fasteners. Whether or not you completely assemble the raised bed and skip those bottom two or whatever you can't reach or you go piece by piece as you assemble them, flipping them upside down, finishing the two that you having trouble reaching and then flipping it back over to continue could be helpful in the process. And the kit comes with a protective trim so once you've got the raised bed assembled you put this on the top rim of that raised bed that's going to help prevent anyone from getting scratched as they're working in it and this is a really nice finishing touch it looks good one thing that I found out the hard way was that when you're putting on that trim it's better to leave it a little bit longer than you think it needs to be because it tends to shrink back up I think when you're applying it to the rim of the raised bed it's stretching out a little bit and then after a period of time it kind of retracts maybe cut it about a half an inch longer than it looks like it needs to be and kind of push that in there, work it in there, and it should end up just fine. This is really just a protective measure, and even if you've got a small gap, it's really only an aesthetic point. You should have enough protection there to keep anyone from getting scratched. My first impressions from this product is that it's really high quality. I like the look and the feel of all the panels and the parts that come with the kit, and when you put it together, it's really solid. If sustainability is a priority for you, I want you to know that the packaging these kits are shipped in is fairly minimal. You can use the cardboard for sheet mulching in the garden, otherwise it can easily be recycled. And the plastic film that comes on the panels is something that you can recycle as well. You want to keep it as clean and dry as possible, but this is likely something that you can drop off for recycling at your local grocery store. And I really like that you have a great opportunity to build a deep, healthy soil structure in these raised beds. Whether you're working with a 17 inch or a 32 inch tall model, that can be a lot of soil that you need to fill them up. There are a lot of great videos out there that will demonstrate filling up part of these raised beds with logs. Those logs can do a great job at filling up a lot of space in your raised bed so you will minimize your costs on filling it with soil. However, I want you to understand it's going to take years for those logs to turn into actual soil. So if you live in a hot dry climate such as Central Texas, it may not be the best option if you want to have a really deep healthy soil structure. One thing you might consider, which can take a little bit more time initially, you know, I know you're probably ready to get this garden set up, planted, and 
growing, but consider composting in layers in these raised beds. It's like lasagna gardening, essentially. You can layer elements of browns and greens, grass clippings, dried leaves, maybe even some kitchen scraps. Over time, that's gonna break down and I think will be a better combination for producing a healthy living soil structure. Whichever method you choose, realize that the organic materials are gonna break down over the first couple of seasons, so it's likely that you'll need to add more compost or soil ahead of subsequent plantings. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a video on that process. I have a lot of ideas I'd like to share with you. As sheet mulching material. Now pausing for the airplane Passover slash cat fight segment. Hugel culture style, Hugel culture style, the Hugel culture. Now check out more awesome gardening videos on my channel. Like this video and follow New Garden Road for weekly content. You can grow your own food. Keep it organic.